This is Twit. Crypto jacking is a relatively new kind of security threat, and even a company like Tesla isn't immune to it. Researchers at Redlock, which is a cloud monitoring and defense company, discovered and published the details of a crypto jacking campaign targeting Tesla. And we have Redlock CTO Gaurav Kumar uh, on the line to talk about their findings. Welcome, Gaurav. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. It's great to have you here. Thank you for joining us. So um, why don't we kind of take a step back first and foremost and start with crypto jacking at its core. What is that exactly? Explain it a little bit. Sure. Um, crypto jacking is a new kind of an attack, as you just mentioned. Uh, what happens in this kind of attack is that attacker is exploiting the computing resources of the victim to do crypto mining. Um, as we have seen in the last couple of months or maybe last couple of years, the price of cryptocurrencies have really skyrocketed. So it makes it really, really very lucrative for the attackers to just do this crypto mining to gain financial, uh, just gain some money out of it. So it's just very easy. And there's a lot of money to be to be gained there. I have to imagine you also need a lot of resources. You guys had the cloud. Uh, well, you had the cloud security intelligence research team uh, with Redlock. So talk a little bit about the hack itself. Um, what exactly did you discover here? Uh, how did you communicate that with Tesla? What was what was the response there? Yeah, sure. Um, so that. The charter of the CSI team, the cloud security intelligence team, is to find out uh, the misconfigurations on the internet, and spe especially when it comes to public cloud. Uh, we have so far discovered many such misconfigurations, and one of the misconfiguration is in, in a software called Kubernetes. Uh, so what we found out is that we found a server which was running Kubernetes, it's just a software, um, it was badly configured and we could see the credentials of some customer. We didn't know that who, the, who, this, who this customer is. And we did some investigation and we found out, oh, wow, it actually belongs to Tesla. Uh, we also observed that there was something interesting running on this server. Uh, and when we looked into it, we found that, oh, actually, this server is doing crypto mining. Uh, which was very weird, like, why would Tesla actually do crypto mining? Right. Uh, <laughs> so on further investigation, we found that, oh, it's actually a compromised server. Uh, the attacker basically exploited a vulnerability, and now they are doing crypto mining. Since you uh, met... Uh I just want to say, since you mentioned Kubernetes, uh, we should, full disclosure, say that Google Cloud, Cloud Platform is one of our sponsors. Uh, but, but I have a, a question about, um, is there any sense that they, they did anything besides cy cyber crypto jacking? Did they, did they steal any other data? Do we know? Uh, it's hard to tell. They might have. Uh, we did see credentials, uh, the AWS Cloud credentials are there uh, on the console. So it's likely that attacker may have done something else too. However, Tesla has confirmed that uh, it was non-private. It, it was just engineering data. It was related to some telemetry of cars. Um, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, I think Tesla can better confirm that. As far as we know, it, at least crypto, crypto mining was going on. Yeah, and you're talking about password uh, or password protection or lack thereof. So, is that Tesla setting up setting up this instance improperly? Like, when you when you follow the breadcrumbs back, who does that lead to? Uh, yes, actually. So, this server was uh, not configured from a security perspective. Uh, it to begin with, there was no reason for this server to be available out there on the public internet. Uh, it was publicly accessible. It shouldn't have been. And even if it was, then it should have been password protected. So, yeah, I mean, this, this is one of the challenges that, uh, you know, with, with the cloud, you do get a lot of uh, speed. It's very, it's very agile. It's very easy to launch these servers. But then, you know, <laughs> security is, a, is, is considered as a friction. Um, so uh, we don't know what exactly went wrong, but at least we know that uh, it was a misconfiguration. Right. 
So uh, maybe this is a too complicated to answer in the time that we have, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> like as, as a lay person, it's confusing to me because there's noth nothing that I have, anything that I have, any of the devices I have, um, most of them anyway, it's very difficult to not put a password on them. You know, my iPhone, for example, like I have to go to great lengths to say, no, I don't want a password for sure. I don't. Um, it, this isn't, is that, that's not how this works, right? I mean, is it, is it very easy to not add, add a password? Is that, is that complicated for them? It's not, actually. And uh, what we have seen in the last couple of years is that many softwares out there uh, don't have secure defaults, like Hadoop clusters and even like MongoDBs and Redis servers. All these servers are have been built in a way that, oh, we will get you up and running very quickly. So they don't have secure defaults. And this is what happens many a times is that Oh yeah, we need this server. Let's just launch it. We will worry about security later. Hmm. Interesting. So um, obviously, crypto mining requires a lot of resources. <laughs> yes. Electrical cost. Uh, it can can be pretty large when you're talking about crypto mining. Um, but you you had mentioned that this was relatively obscured because it resided on that corporate cloud infrastructure. Is I mean, is, is corporate cloud, cloud infrastructure a common target for this particular sort of thing, for crypto mining, for that very reason? So I would say public cloud, uh, because corporate cloud can mean two things. Corporate cloud can be running on-premise, and it can be running on the cloud. Uh, cloud is indeed a very interesting target for the attackers, uh, because it's virtual, you basically get virtually unlimited compute resources. And... This is what we have observed, is that attackers are actually going after public cloud. Uh, and we have seen in the past that people are putting misconfigured, insecure software out there. So for an, from an attacker perspective, it's awesome because, hey, you know, it's very easy to just compromise the server because it doesn't even have a password. There's actually nothing to compromise to mm -hmm. begin with. And once you compromise, then you can launch as many instances as you want and do crypto mining, depending upon the, again, security configuration. So, I mean, the, the Bitcoin, as far as I hear in the news, the Bitcoin market is so volatile. Is it is it really more profitable? Is this really more profitable than just gold fashion identity theft? <laughs> uh, it becomes profitable if you talk about unlimited compute resources. Like if you are uh, from a crypto jacking perspective, if you just compromise like one machine, I don't think so. You're gonna anybody's gonna make any money out of it. But it's all about the scale. Uh, you know, I mean, we have seen a month ago or so there was a, a plugin, a browser plugin, which was actually doing crypto mining on the browsers, uh, and a lot of uh, uh, systems were infected. So it's not just one machine. You have to really compromise a large number of machines for it to be effective. So Salon, uh, the online newspaper Salon and other places are now saying that they're offering that as an option to people. Crypto mine, let me use your resources in crypto mine instead of um, if you want to continue using your ad blocker. Um, is there any security danger to that? I mean, we do hear a lot about, you know, this nefarious crypto mining. Um, is, is that dangerous to let a website, if they've disclosed it, use your resources for crypto mining? I would personally say... Yes, it is dangerous <laughs> because today they are doing crypto mining, but what is preventing them from doing something else? Uh, more importantly, what if that organization which is giving you the service it gets compromised? And what if the attackers can launch something more malicious through this as, as, as an attack vector? So it's effectively telling, you know, hey, run this software and we will pay you some money, but you don't know what that software is doing. What is preventing that software from doing, from stealing your passwords or credit card numbers? Absolutely. Mm. Uh, Gaurav, it's a pleasure talking with you. We really appreciate you guys uh, doing you. the research that you do. Redlock.io. Uh, is that where you want people to kind of follow yes. all your work online? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Gaurav Kumar uh, from Redlock. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. your time. Thanks for your Take time. Take care. Bye -bye. Best of luck with the research.